Hello and welcome back to another guide for Phoenix Point. My name is Heiken and today we're going to look into the strategy layer of the game, base management and resource management, which is ultra important because it is very likely the reason why you can lose the game. Most of the tactical stuff can be quote unquote easily passed by, but if you are not careful with the strategy layer, you have almost lost. I will try to be as concise and uh, non-repetitive as possible, rush through everything that you need to know in order to get ready to conquer the world again. Let's go through the most important resources first and I will explain uh, how you manage each of them individually. The most important resources is the number of uh, civilians or surviving population. When the game starts, uh, the uh, seed has around 100, I think 110 havens, which account for 100% of the remaining human population. Um, contrary to XCOM 2, where the uh, doom clock fills up and then there are multiple ways of solving it, if uh, you fall under a certain threshold, you will lose the game. And there is no way of um, uh, reversing the already existing damage. So over time, the Pandora virus will eventually win. The only way of um, beating that is defending <clears throat> all of uh, the uh, havens that are being attacked and pushing back the virus as fast and as far as possible. Um, in terms of strategy, what that means is beginning of uh, the game, depending on where your um, uh, first base starts, you want to expand relatively quickly. You can expand into any other base from the beginning of the game. Keep in mind, though, that all of your airships only have a certain distance, so you uh, would be potentially worse off completely uh, creating a base on the other side of uh, the world. What I would recommend you to do is um, to uh, branch out and within the first, say, 60 days, have at least three bases that cover the majority of the world. If you want to be ultra efficient, I would recommend starting here uh, in uh, the center of Mongolia slash China, as this covers uh, the entirety of the Eastern Hemisphere. Uh, you can then create another base in Northern uh, Africa, uh, like, for instance, uh, the Phoenix Point base over here um, with only one step up in between in India. Uh, this year should cover the majority of Africa and uh, Europe. And then uh, the painful part will potentially go uh, be going via um, Antarct Antarctica um, and Alaska. Uh, all the way uh, to uh, the US. Once you do have northern US as well, most of uh, the world territory is under your spell. So um, expanding fast and expanding aggressive is a success, a success strategy specifically on higher difficulties. Final thought around uh, covering the uh, saving uh, humans. You should always have at least one aircraft with a SWAT in the specific area so that you can actually go and defend. Make sure that they are not uh, too uh, tired because otherwise you will have problems with the defense. You should do every single defense that you can. Moving on to the actual resources of the game. There are three base resources, technology, which is used for advanced weapons, materials, which is the core material that you use for most of your stuff, and food. All three resources are important, food specifically for the soldiers. The common denominator is, with the exception of food, none of the other resources can be self-created. You either get them as a reward for defending havens or you get them in trading, which brings us to the second uh, part. You should be continuously trading. The way that that uh, works is, at the beginning of the game, you will start with one airship vessel. You should use that in order to continuously explore. As the game goes on, you might want to, in an early stage of the game, already steal another air, uh, aircraft. You can see that later in the game, there is an actual advantage of having multiple aircrafts. In my case, I do have a dozen uh, aircraft. Uh, one of the aircraft that uh, requires specific mention are the Heliuses. They fly the fastest. Their speed is unmatched, but the range is limited. So uh, I would highly recommend stealing one or two Heliuses and use them for trading purpose. You can even put your eight-man squad into two of those Heliuses and fly them around, uh, only stopping from time to time to recover stamina that um, 
uh, uh, hits two birds with one stone. You can be on the road, explore everything and still trade. Um, for the record, most of the trading is positive, which means whenever you're going to hit a, um, a haven, you can trade resources and most of the trades will be beneficial for you. The only exception for that are Sinidrian havens that specifically have food and material. Um, no matter what you're trading, you're going to be uh, worse off and should avoid these quote unquote crook havens. Trading is a highly efficient way of making money. You should always try to continue trading. It's the by far most efficient way of making money. Uh, the last way of gaining these resources is dismantling loot that you are finding or looting in missions in particular. Many of the salvage missions will allow you to loot. Many of uh, the um, invasion missions of alien hives will have loot crates uh, sitting around as well. And you can get those uh, additional resources uh, via uh, the looting. One particular trick later in the game that you can use is uh, creating food out of various sources and then just trading it for the other resources to continuously have an influx. The two forms of food creation are farms, uh, relatively late game invention that in my perspective sucks. They are net negative, so don't go for them. And the second one is simply uh, capturing aliens and utilizing them for food, which is much more efficient. Um, if you are paralyzing aliens, uh, capture them for food, you can just optimize your economy. The reality of this game is if you want to be successful on higher difficulties, you will need to micromanage trading because it will be the single most important part uh, for your economic success. Moving on to the next resource, which in this case is mutagens. Mutagens as a resource are a alien only resource that you can uh, gather when capturing aliens at the moment that you um, create a containment facility, which is a research item that you can get relatively early in the game and build a containment facility. Then you can capture aliens as part of the alien capturing the containment facility will then allow you to either kill for no particular advantage harvest like i mentioned for food or harvest for uh, mutagens mutagens is a fantastic quote-unquote free resource as you can always use them in order to um, either um, upgrade your soldiers uh, the way to do that is getting a mutagen uh, facility. Once uh, you do have such a facility, you can uh, go into the actual soldiers and start um, equipping them with the standard um, mutagens. Over time, you will research and unlock additional ones. I can firmly attest that the standard ones, the standard armored head, the standard regeneration torso and the standard stompered legs are the best uh, and most widely usable uh, mutagens. So um, you can easily equip most of your soldiers, saving money to not buy them armor. Instead, uh, going for an armor torso and stomper legs is completely adequate for most of your uh, CD and E team. Overall, you want to use mutagens uh, loosely as uh, this is one of the resources that you and your um, playstyle can easily generate. Which brings us to the next set of resources. Three resources that have been implemented with the Ancients uh, DLC are the Living Crystals, the Aricalcum and the Protein Gas. You will find uh, these in various uh, forms across uh, the globe. Um, each uh, can be uh, obtained in one of the ancient runes. In order to even obtain them, you need to clear the ancient runes. So this is really more endgame stuff. Um, once you are able to clear an, um, ancient runes, you would want uh, to search for all of them and clear them at your heart's content as fast as possible. You will need to have uh, special archaeological probes in order to do that and then start uh, to um, uncover all of them. Uh, there will be three processing sites that do not uh, allow you to gain resources at all. Each of these three requires an individual processing site. So first you will get the processing sites and then you will get the, um, uh, the actual um, deposits of them. 
in a standard form, you would get a very low amount of, um, of um, material from each of your mines. However, uh, I highly suggest that uh, you are going to invest into archaeology labs, plenty thereof. I have a few bases that fully focus on archaeology labs, and that will give you a massive, massive amount of additional resources. This is perfect for the end game, as it completely will negate the need for any of those resources for weapons or nearly completely negated. So the moment that you can spec into those, um, it means two things. Number one, you can focus your resources on uh, exclusively on upgrading of base building as well as um, other um, material building that you need. And secondly, you can focus your complete uh, production um, on those resources if you're doing them well. Let's talk about uh, the other core parts of base management. Most of the bases that you are going to start uh, with will have the ability to build a couple of core buildings. Let me run you through the ones that are important at the beginning and then the ones that are becoming important in the mid game. The most important one is the satellite uplink whenever you do have a uh, base or whenever you are uh, beginning to uh, find a new one you want to have satellite uplinks they automatically uh, will give you all of the points of interest and are incredibly important to also scout out um, alien hives you do have two um, you do have a utility um, with the energy generator you need to build one of them and keep them up you do have two buildings that um, become vital as well one is the living quarters um, that helps you to um, recover um, stamina points quicker for soldiers i recommend having one to two of them in most of your locations maybe even three in a single location which is frequently traveled uh, you can drop uh, your aircraft there have a very short pit stop and then essentially start um, moving again the other um, important uh, one is the medical bay which will recover hit points uh, you can circumvent that to a certain degree because um, uh, med kits and, and other form of healing are permanent so you Typically, um, if you play it right, you will end missions with more or less full hit points um, or will be able to heal at the beginning of your next mission. So in your first base, I would recommend um, an energy generator, satellite uplink and then living quarter medical bay. Now, uh, let's talk about mid game and specialization of uh, bases. Mid game, you will get mist repellers at some point. You should try to research them as fast as possible. They will push back uh, the mist and will have massive positive effects. So you should build one in every single location, full stop. Um, secondly, um, you will um, across uh, the um, game uh, uh, start uh, to find the need of building training facilities. I personally am a big advocate of having one facility or one area where you especially focus on training facilities. In my case, I did have that in one of the bases. Training facilities have a nice uh, side effect as uh, they will um, create two experience points for every hour that a character sits there. If you find a base that is more or less centrally located and can focus on training facilities, you can drop new soldiers in there, let them level up to level five or six, and make them immediately usable. Word of um, warning though, they will only get uh, the core um, ability points uh, for level up. They will not have um, individual ability points from missions that they would be undertaking. So build one focused um, base for uh, training facilities. Another focused uh, base that we've already talked about is the archaeology labs. I would build one base that focuses complete on, uh, completely on archaeology labs as that helps you to uh, get more of the end game resources. And then there are individual buildings that you maybe want to build once or twice, but certainly not in large numbers. Uh, storage is a great example of that. Uh, you typically have enough storage. Uh, it will require you to go very deep into the game before you have a second uh, storage. Make sure that you understand that because you can demolish existing storage in bases uh, that, you, uh, that you conquer. That will uh, free up resources in, um, in return. You need one mutation lab, you need one cybernetics lab, and you need one containment facility in my perspective. You don't need any more of that. 
which brings us nicely to the last two um, uh, buildings that you can invest quite a bit but mind you both of them cost a hefty uh, tech fee and quite a bit of material research labs are great i should have known well in advance to build more research labs um, they will speed up all of the research and if you're not as familiar with the research tree or completionist you should have a focused base on research labs equivalently uh, fabrication plans improve uh, the speed of fabricating items i would build earlier in the game a couple of fabrication plans to speed up the actual production specifically since you want to produce uh, um, uh, aircrafts at the beginning and then once you are solidly in mid game i would crank up uh, the dial on the research labs and build them uh, building uh, in this game, in particular base building, is always a trade-off because you will never have enough resource and you will always feel like you're compromising on something. So my suggestion to that is reduce the pain as much as possible, focus on one base uh, that trains uh, soldiers, focus on one base that does archaeology stuff. At the beginning just have the core basics covered, uh, which would be living quarters and medical bay, and then over time uh, build um, items only one mutation lab cyber lab and containment and in the mid and end game you can go ham on the research lab so that's really it for base building now how do you approach the game and the flow of it if you have the loss condition well under control and if you find a way of building enough resources then you should be actively hunting for mutagens that is what i would recommend you to do because it speeds up a lot of uh, your uh, of your play style additionally uh, if you want to recruit uh, new soldiers make sure that you are actively working with diplomacy uh, and that you are in good standing with most of the havens havens that have good standing will save you additional money and money saved there or money not spent means you have a better economy so that's another important tip finally i would uh, suggest you uh, scan your active objectives uh, based on the highest priority the personal priority that i would suggest is haven defenses always come first any form of attack that will happen um, to your bases comes uh, right second thirdly you're trying to uh, find and uh, deactivate pandoran structures as they grow in size and influence over time and then fourthly you're going through a couple of the other missions as and when needed that is really what you know in order to be successful on the strategy layer make sure that your finances are tight and that you do have enough um, trading material don't go all out but instead try to continuously keep the economy rolling try to focus on continuously producing something never uh, be idle on that part a great way of achieving that is create um, crafting aircrafts for a longer period of time they take a long time at the beginning and then make sure that you continuously research other than that it's relatively straightforward don't lose the game by losing too many havens and make sure that your economy stays strong that's the bottom line if that was helpful for you and if you enjoyed guides around phoenix point try to trade a little bit of your time for a like on this video this is the economy of youtube right there and see you in one of my future guides take care and have a good one